All right, good morning, everybody. We're going to go ahead and get started this morning. I'm going to go through the announcements real quick, and uh, and i got a little something I want to share this morning. Uh, October the 14th, which is tomorrow night, is our in-depth Bible study. It'll be at 6 o'clock up in the Fellowship Hall, so please remember that. Uh, October the 16th, there will be uh, no teen kids. That's this coming Wednesday night. And we also will have no service, no Bible study or anything uh, that night because uh, the kids are out for uh, fall break. And we want to give everybody's family a chance to uh, spend some time together and do some things that uh, they may want to do. So please remember that. Uh, October 20th will be a de dedication service in the youth building. And also that uh, Sunday night, uh, we'll be having uh, singing featuring the Interstate Quartet at 6 p.m. Then on uh, <clears throat> October the 23rd, uh, it's going to be a judgment house for the teens, and uh, they'll be meeting here at the church and uh, leaving at 6 o'clock. Uh, October the 27th, we'll be having a dinner after service. Uh, October 31st uh, is trunk or treat, and that is going to be from 5 to 7 p.m., and I uh, I believe there's a sign-up sheet in the back, or have you? Miss Karen already has it. I think she says she had enough folks to sign up for that, so we appreciate y'all for signing up for that. Uh, there will be no drama practice this evening. Uh, Mr. Kenneth Hawkins had knee surgery this week, and Miss Cindy's not going to be able to be here, so there will be no uh, drama practice tonight. Uh, today is the last day for any Operation Christmas Child donations. Uh, so if y'all would, please see Sierra or Teresa for any donations that y'all would like to make to that. Uh, October the 20th, the dedication service for the youth building, that's the Sunday morning service. All offerings will go toward paying on the note for the piece of property that we bought. Any other uh, announcements from anybody this morning? Okay. Okay. So everybody, please remember that next Sunday. Any of the kids that want to go to the uh, puppets up at uh, Rainsville First Baptist, please see Josh Kazord about that. Anything else? All right. Seems like it's been forever since I got to stand up here. And. Uh, I just want to tell everybody and thank everybody for your prayers, for your phone calls, for your texts, for your cards. Uh, that really means a lot. And you don't really know how much it means to you until you actually go through it. You know, what I, what I went through was just a very, you know, I call it a, not a, a, a bad surgery of any kind. But I will tell you this, I still need your prayers because right now I'm struggling. I can't do anything. I can't pick up anything. All I get to do is sit around the house at home all week. So I need your prayers for that to help me get through this. I got a couple more weeks to go. And I won't tell you, I'm looking forward to that. Because I want to get back to the old me, the old self, where I can do whatever I want to do, when I want to do it, and how I want to do it. And I'm going to tell you something. I feel like a lot of times that's how we are as Christians. And our Sunday school lesson talked about it exactly today. You know, it should be his will, not our will. And a lot of times we let our, our will get in the way of what we want to do versus what God would have us to do. And I want to tell you this morning, we all need to take a step back and take a minute and think about, is this his will or is this my will? In anything, 
anything that we do, no matter what it is, no, how, no matter how small we may think it is, no matter how big it is. And one of the things that I heard, well, I've been down and couldn't do nothing. And, it, you know, it, it, when I heard it, I thought, yeah, we miss that a lot of times as Christians. It was a very simple quotation. It said, when you think life is falling apart and the pieces are just falling everywhere, someday you're going to realize that it was actually the pieces falling together to make what you are supposed to be. Amen. Think about that for just a minute. Whenever life feels like it's falling apart, think about it that it may not be that it's falling apart, that it may be him molding you into the next thing he wants you to be. I thank you again, Brother Josh.
put a smile on your face and stand up and shake somebody's hand and tell them you're glad they're here.
I can't count the broken roads that I've been down, but all I know is something had to give, something had to give, cause living my life so wild and free, finally caught up and do it left me broken, left me Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me.
felt no worth You paid it all for me You have been so, so kind to me Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending Reckless love of God Oh, it chases me down But still I'm found Leaves the 99 I couldn't earn it I don't deserve it Why you ever chose me has always been a mystery. All my life I've been told I belong at the end of the line with all the other not quites, with all the never get it right. But it turns out they're the ones you were looking for all this time. Cause I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody. All about somebody who saved my soul And ever since you rescued me You gave my heart a song to sing I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus Moses had stage fright And David brought a rock to his sword fight you picked 12 outsiders nobody would have chosen And you changed the world Well, the moral of the story is Everybody's got a purpose So when I hear that devil start talking to me Saying, who do you think you are? I say, I'm just a nobody Trying to tell everybody All about somebody Who saved my soul Ever since you rescued me, you gave my heart a song to sing. I'm living for the world to see, nobody but Jesus. I'm living for the world to see, nobody but Jesus. 
to tell everybody all about somebody who saved my soul. Ever since you rescued me, you gave my heart a song to sing. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. Living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. Jesus said it, it was expedient for me to go away, but I send you another comforter to guide you from day to day. So they tarried at Jerusalem for power from on high, that saints were Psalm 23, Psalm 23, for the last few weeks we've been talking about expectations, we've talked about what God should be able to expect out of us, we've, uh, last week we took a, a, a quick look at what we should be able to expect from people that we meet in this, in this last days, and, uh, but this morning we're going to give the book of 2 Timothy a rest and we're going to go to Psalm 23 and look at what we can expect out of God. Amen. 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 Look.
look at what we can expect out of God. I, I tell you this morning, I've, I've been looking forward all week to getting to preach this message and uh, the Lord has just laid this heavy upon my heart. A lot of times I feel like that I'm a hard preacher, that I'm all the time just uh, uh, get, getting you beat up and bloody. But that's this morning, we're going to look at what we can expect out of God. Uh, Psalm 23, if you would, rise for the reverence of the reading of God's Word. And uh, we'll go through this. Most of you probably know it by heart, but it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's bow for prayer. Father, God, we love you this morning. God, I want to thank you and praise you, Lord. Though we don't deserve it, you have put your manifest spirit of God in this place to let us enjoy uh, that feeling. And Father, I want to thank you for it this morning. God, I pray that not, not a single spirit, but the Holy Spirit be allowed to operate this morning in this room. God, there are folks under the sound of my voice this morning that need an encouraging word. And Lord, I can't offer it to them, but God, you can. And I pray this morning that you'd take my mouth and anoint it to speak only your words. Lord God, anoint the hearts and the minds of this congregation to receive your word and to respond to it. Father, we'll be careful to give you all the praise, the honor, the glory, and the thanksgiving for us in your name. The name above every name that we do pray. Amen and amen, and you may be seated. Amen. This morning we're going to take a quick look at, at what we can expect out of God. Nowhere else in Scripture could I think of uh, this morning to show us what we could expect. Number one, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. A shepherd does a couple of things. Uh, that I want to uh, go over with you this morning. The first thing the shepherd, shepherd does is he leads and he guides the sheep. He, he, he sends them in the direction that they need to go and uh, he takes them uh, to places where they can be fed and where they can be watered. And, and he, he uh, 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 watches over them with a watchful eye to make sure they're going in the direction uh, that he wants them to go. I, I praise God this morning that, uh, that when he is looking upon us as his sheep, that he wants us to be fed and he wants us to be watered this morning. I'm so thankful for that. Oh, but uh, uh, there's another thing that the shepherd does. Uh, he says, the Lord is my shepherd. I, I shall not want that. Here it is. Here's the thing that the shepherd does is he leads and he guides, but he also protects his sheep. He, he puts a, a hedge of protection round about him. I, I tell you what, this morning I'm thankful that he wants to feed me. I'm thankful that he wants to lead me. But this morning I'm thankful that he wants to protect me. Uh, he wants to uh, uh, hold back all the things uh, that Satan wants to do to me. He wants to, uh, he, he wants to protect us from this world uh, that we're walking through today. I'm thankful this morning that he is our shepherd and then you know the next part of that verse says I shall not want uh, it, it is saying that I don't have to want for anything I don't have to want to be fed I don't have to want to be led I don't have to want to be protected because he does all that for us amen uh, this morning as we look at what we can expect out of God we can expect him to be our shepherd uh, it, it tells us very expressly right there but he goes on and he says says, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He, he leads me beside the still waters. In other words, in, in this, in this uh, psalm, 
uh, David is saying, he has given me plenty. Amen. Amen. He's given me plenty. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. What, what more could a, a sheep ask for? Amen. He leaves me beside still waters. When, when waters are still, that means that the water's deep. And, and, and so there's plenty of it. There's plenty of water. There's plenty of food. And, 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 and so this morning, I want you to know that we can depend upon God. We can expect God to give us plenty. Amen. He's a God, not a, a God of sparingly. He's a God of plenty. I'm telling you this morning, if you need grace, He's a God of plenty of grace. Amen. Yeah. Now, the Bible says where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. He's got plenty this morning to cover whatever you're going through and whatever you need. We've got a God that's got a God of plenty this morning. A scripture says, I was young, now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. That means to tell me that the righteous, uh, God will feed them. That means to tell me the righteous, God will clothe them. He says you worry about tomorrow. He said don't worry about tomorrow. Uh, there's a plenty for the evil is in the day thereof. He said you just, get, you just depend upon me and I'll take care of the little thing. God is a God of plenty this morning. I'm so thankful this morning uh, that we can expect that out of God. He, he leads me beside the still waters. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. What a God that we, it is that we serve. Enjoy this morning the good times. Enjoy the times of plenty. If you don't have any problems going on right now in your life and you've got plenty of food on your table, uh, you've got plenty to... Uh, to eat a good place to sleep. You enjoy that, okay? Amen. 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 You praise God for the good times. Amen. Praise Him in the good times because I'm going to tell you, it's not always good. Look on with me here in verse number 3. It says, He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. For who? For His name's sake. He's guiding you in your life in a direction to bring glory to himself. Amen. Did y'all hear what I said this morning? He is guiding you in your life to, in a direction to bring glory to himself. It's for his name's sake. We can expect this out of God that he has got a perfect will for our lives. Amen. He has got a direction that he wants to take you in, that he wants to guide you in, and the end result is going to be glory for himself. Amen. He leads us and he guides us in a direction to bring glory to himself. We can expect that out of God. He's a God that is our shepherd. He's a God that's got plenty. And he is also a God that uh, is, is guiding us and, and leading us in a direction to get glory for himself. So many times in the, in the world in which we live today, and especially in the church culture that we have today, we have this perverted idea that the Christian life is about us. If we would lose that this morning and realize that God is all about Him, it's all about bringing Him glory, and all about bringing Him honor, all about Him, then we'd have such a, a better Christian walk. Amen. 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 All right, verse 4. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. See, we're not always in those times that are good times. We're not always in the time where you're laying down in green pastures and being led beside still waters. You're not always in those times of plenty. Sometimes you're in a time of sparseness. Sometimes you're in a place in the, in the shadow of death, in, in the valley of the shadow of death. But listen, what did the previous verse tell us? That he's guiding us there to bring glory to himself, right? Amen. 
So even though you may be going through some hard times this morning, even though you may be going through a drought, so to speak, in your Christian walk, listen to me. Just keep walking, amen? amen. Uh, because I'm going to tell you, the God that's still got plenty, He's still the one leading. He's still the one guiding. And you can expect that He'll be there with you in the valley of the shadow of death. Let me tell you something this morning. I run across this. I don't know who said it. I don't know who it originated with uh, but it said this it, it said if your faith can't be tested your faith can't be trusted if your faith can't be tested it can't be trusted this morning I want you to understand that everything is not always uh, going to be roses. That everything's not always going to be wonderful and beautiful in our eyes. Sometimes we're going through a valley in our lives and, and, and sometimes it, it may be like you look up and you think God have you forgotten me uh, because I'm going through all of this and, and, and God are, where are you at during the midst of all of this because it sure does seem like my faith uh, ain't getting me any were right now. Honey, listen to me this morning. Hang on to your faith. Amen. 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 If you're going through a time of trial and a time of testing, you know what? It's trying to prove something to you that God is God in the mountain, but He's also God in the valley. Amen. Amen. He's God when the good times, but He's also God in the bad times. Uh, uh, Brother C.T. Uh, uh, C.T. Townsend, ain't that right? He, he sings this song, uh, and, and I'm going to tell you something. First time I heard it, I thought, man, that's me, that's me, that's me. He, and, 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 and I'm telling you, that song has spoke into my, into my heart something that is just unbelievable. It, it starts out by saying, I, uh, God, I, I'm, I've wondered about how come uh, I've had to go through so many hard times. I thought I deserved better uh, because I was your child. And then by the end of that verse, I thought, man, that's me, you know. God, why am I having to do this? God, why am I having to do this? He apologizes to God and says to God, you don't owe me one thing. Amen. 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 Lord, you don't owe me a thing. If you never bless me again, you've blessed me enough to be saved. Amen. And if we're going through some valleys, if we're going through some trials, if we're going through trouble and testing, I'm telling you all he's doing is sending you through the fire and that's the refining fire of faith. So that way it's burning off the impurities. That way you'll trust anymore. And when you get on the other side, you'll think, man, how did I get through that? Because I'm going to tell you something, church. You don't know this until you go through some things but you think oh God how in the world am I going to get through this God how in the world are you going to move and get me through this place I don't see a way out but I'm going to tell you something that God of the universe can step in and bring you through something you'll look back and you'll think how did I get through that praise be to God he got me through yeah. amen. amen praise be to God he got me through Sometimes it goes rough. Sometimes life will hit you right square in the face and it'll knock you down to your knees. But uh, brothers and sisters, let me tell you, when you're on your knees, you praise Him because you've got a God that you can expect to be there. Amen. 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 He says, even though I'm going through, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he says, I will fear no evil. Do you understand that we've got nothing to be afraid of if we've got God on our side? Amen. The Bible says he did not give us the spirit of fear but of power of love and of a sound mind. I'm going to tell you something this morning. We've got nothing to fear because we know the maker of the universe. Amen. You say, but Brother John, I, I go through some things. I, I go through some things and I get, a, I get afraid. Scripture says, what time I am afraid, I'll trust in thee. Amen. Amen. Yeah, amen. When, when you get down to that place and you get to that point where you're afraid, you, you, God, I don't know what you're doing. I, I'm, I'm afraid you might have left me. He says, we have nothing to fear for thou art with me. 
Y'all listen to me this morning. We've got a God that we can expect to be with us. Regardless of what we're going through, regardless of how hard it may be, we've got a God that's with us and we've got nothing to fear because he's there. Amen. Thou art with me. The bottom part of that verse, it says, Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Well, going back to the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The rod and the staff of the shepherd is used to keep the sheep in line. Now I want you to get where I'm going here this morning. Sometimes when we're going through trials and we're going through testing, sometimes we put ourselves there. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Sometimes we put ourselves in that predicament. Sometimes we wander off and, and away from the master. We wander off away from the good shepherd, and we we and and, and we get through, uh, get into storms and get into trials. And and you know, and I I, I want to share this with you. There were times, if you study the life of a shepherd, there are times that he will use his rod. If he's got a sheep that keeps wandering off, he'll use that rod, that staff, and he will take the legs of that little sheep and he'll break them. He'll break that sheep's legs. You say, man, that sounds awful. Do you know what the shepherd will then do? He'll put that sheep up on his shoulders. And he'll walk that sheep everywhere he goes. The shepherd's right there. And he'll tend to that sheep and he will love that sheep and he will bind up his wounds and and, and he'll take care of that sheep until it's completely healed. Then when it's completely healed, that sheep won't run off anymore because he's so used to the shepherd. He's so used to the master. So this morning, listen to me what I'm saying to you. You can expect that out of God. Sometimes we go through hard times that are of our own making. And God may be breaking our legs so that way we will depend upon him to get us where we're going. Amen. 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 You say, well, that ain't too comforting to think that he's going to break your legs. But do you think, think about this church this morning. If he's willing to break your legs, that means he's willing to touch you. He's willing to take you wherever he goes. He's willing to, t- to take care of you and to bind you up and to heal you. But that's just because he loves you. Man, what kind of love is that? Then other times you go through hard times that is not of your own making. Sometimes life, like I said, will just hit you square in the face and 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 and, and you're, you're going through something and you've got nothing to do with it and the storms are, is whirling around you and, 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 you, and you're like, God, where are you right now? God, where are you right now? You know, that at times during the, during the night watch of the, the shepherd would be out in the field and, and the sheep couldn't see the shepherd. The sheep couldn't see. It's a dark night, no moonlight, no nothing, and the sheep couldn't see the shepherd, and they'd blade out. You know what they were saying? Where are you? Where are you at right now? Because God, I need to know you're there. That shepherd would lovingly take his staff and reach over and just tap that sheep. To 
said, let him know I'm still here. Amen. You got nothing to fear. You got nothing to worry about because I'm right here and I'm keeping an eye out on you. You may not be able to see him, but bless God, he can still see you. Amen. Amen. And he can reach right through your midnight hour and he can touch you with his staff to let you know that he's still there. Amen. Amen. What a God. What a God we got that we can expect of him that he's going to be there with us. Oh, my goodness. Watch verse 5. He says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You know, if you serve God, you're going to have some enemies. Amen? Amen. Right. You're going to have some folks that are flat out against you. There's going to be times when, when, when you're sitting there and you're eating and you're in the presence of them. Amen? Yeah. Amen. But where's God at? Scripture says thou preparest a table before me. Well, that's out in front of you. Amen? Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Do you understand that God is not, you just don't have to expect him to be here today, but you can expect him to be there tomorrow. Amen. He's out in front of your life. Amen. He's out in front of your life. And though you may be having to sit down and eat with your enemies, though you may be going to go through something tomorrow, you know what? God's already there. Amen. God is the God of not only yesterday and not only today, but he's the God of tomorrow. And he's already there. And he's already, y'all listen to me, if he's all out there preparing you something for tomorrow, that means he's already there. And he knows what that something is. We may not know what that something is, but what do we got to do? Trust in the good shepherd that whatever path he's leading us on is going to eventually bring him glory. Amen. Amen. So you may be having to sit down and eat with your enemies, and he's out in front of you. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. And the next part he says, Thou anointest my head with oil. So he's before you. And I read something a week or two, I don't know how long ago it's been, about the oil. Said sheep would get caught in, uh, in briars and... And, and get cuts on their head, and these flies would come in and lay larvae, and anyhow, it did turn into worms and all this other stuff, and said sheep would actually beat their heads against a tree, against something to try to get rid of that. And, it, and eventually, it might even kill them. But a shepherd would come by and anoint the head of that sheep with some oil, and, and, and it would protect them. It would, it would protect them from the flies that were about to come. He says, Thou anointest my head with oil. But I want to tell y'all something this morning. And I, and I know that that's, that's great and wonderful. And God's out there to protect you. And he wants to anoint your head with oil. But every place, every place in Scripture that talks about the oil... It is a type and a picture of the Holy Spirit. Mm. I don't know if y'all know where I'm going, but I do, and I'm about to shout my way there. Thou anointest my head with oil. Do you know that he wants to pour out his Holy Spirit upon us? To where our cup's running over. Do you, you know why I'm telling y'all this morning, you say, Brother John, you're a nut. I don't care what you think about me. I'm telling you, it's good. And if you'd get in a happy spot like I'm in, it'd be good for you too. But when the oil starts getting poured out, when that Holy Spirit starts moving on you, and it just runs down your head, and you can feel that Holy Spirit just all up all, all, all over you, you know what that, that makes your cup run over. And do you know why your cup runs over? It's so that way you can go spill it off on something. Somebody else. 
Amen. Amen. If we ever lived in a day where some Baptist folk need to have the Holy Spirit poured out on them and need to have the Holy Spirit uh, spilt over on them, we're living in that day today. Some of you ain't smiled in 15 years. I'm telling you, when the Holy Ghost gets a hold of you, you won't help but be able to smile. I'm telling you, when the Holy Spirit gets a hold of you and in your life and you get it spilt out on you, you'll invite folks to church. You'll yeah. care about where their soul's going. I'm telling you, it'll put a step in your step in a praise in your heart if you just get the Holy Spirit poured out upon you. Amen. Thou anointest my head with oil. Scripture says, Thou preparest the table before me, out in front of me. But if he's anointing your head with oil, where's he at? Let me show you. Beside you. Amen. Amen. So you got a God that you expect to be out before you, in front of you. And you got a God that you expect to be beside you. Amen. 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 The last part of that chapter says, Surely, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me. Amen. Follow me? Yeah. Amen. Because he's not only out in front of you. He's not only before you. He's not only beside you. But church, he's behind you. Amen. Amen. He's out in front of you. He's beside you. He's behind you. That's the kind of God we got. Amen. And that's the kind of thing that we can expect out of God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Three or four different times in the book of Joshua, in the book of Deuteronomy, Jesus or, or God inspires the Holy Spirit to write these words down. And, and he, says, he says, Be strong and of good courage. As I was with Moses, so I'll be with you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Deuteronomy 31, 8, he says, I'll never fail you. Not only will he never leave us, he'll never forsake us, he'll never fail us. Jesus says the same thing over in the New Testament. Jesus says in Matthew 28, 20, I believe it is, he says, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. I'm telling you, you've got a God that you can expect to be there with you. Amen. He'll be out in front of you, he'll be beside of you, and he'll be behind you. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Y'all listening, church? If we can expect that all, all, all out of God, the last part of Psalm 23, he ought to be able to expect out of us. Amen. I will dwell in the house of the Lord Because I've got a God that's before me, beside me, behind me, I'm going to make up my mind that regardless of what I'm going through, I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Y'all bow your heads for just a minute. Father, God, I, I pray, Lord, that as this word has went forth, I pray, God, that it has been an encouragement to somebody. I pray, Lord God, that they may come in just a few minutes and praise you for the hope that they found this morning, for the encouragement that they've gotten. But God, I want to pray, Lord, this morning, especially right now in this minute, for that one that's lost and undone without you. God, I've told them what they can expect out of you this morning. And I know, Lord, that you want to add somebody to your fold today, that you want to bring a new sheep home. Father, I pray, God, that as, as we give the invitation, God, that you'll convict their heart and bring them to the saving knowledge of who you are and what you'll do. Lord, I, I just pray that you'd have your way in this time of, of altar call. God, not, not, don't let one thing take away from what you want to do in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Play us a song, Brother Wade.